May God bless you. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, we started studying a topic. We will complete it today, maybe. We should give thanks and praise to God who made us go from darkness to light. Who is happy? We're in darkness. If today we are in the light, we should give thanks and praise to God. And it's important. And he's the one who makes us able. He alone. A little while ago, Brother Matthias said it. Brother Seca said it. If we can be standing here, it's the grace of God. Yesterday evening, many people promised to be to the church, to, to, to be in the church and to travel. That could not make it. Why? Why? Because they were not made able. They remained lying. But you and I, God granted his grace. And this morning, again, we are before the Lord to receive some instructions. Receive instructions. We will read our Bible passage. We will read many Bible passages that will assist us in entering in the topic. The topic is... Let's give thanks and praises to God. Let's say thank you to God because he did not leave us in darkness. He made us go from darkness to light, from Satan to God. Amen. And we should be happy to have had this privilege. We read in Deuteronomy 32 in the first place. Please stand. <coughs> From verse 44. And Moses, uh, my reader, Deuteronomy 32, verse 44. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the years of the people. He and Oshi, the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts onto the words which ye shall command your children to observe to do. All the words of this law. Let's say amen. We should do so. Not only our children, but ourselves. For it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. The word of God is our life. If you neglect the word of God, you neglect your own life. You are not neglecting the life of somebody else. You neglect your own life. Amen. Who heard me well? Never commit adultery. You commit adultery. You shorten your own life. Run away from fornication. Who said it? It's the word of God. If you love and if you like it, we see the brother, 30 years old, whose hair is falling. And what can we do? Nothing. We will ask for the grace of God. And God is free. God is free. You cannot force God. It's free to heal you. Heal to bring you back to him because you are a Christian. You confess what you did, it will forgive you. 
but it can allow you to go back in glory 32 years old. Can you understand? So the word of God is our life. It's the life of each one of us. Myself is my life. That's why I say, pray for me. I need it. I need your prayer because I want to walk like the scripture says. I want to walk like I want, but like the scripture says. From for it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. Amen. Amen. Let's read Philippians. Philippians 1, verse 21. Philippians chapter 1. For Christ, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is a, is gain. And who is Christ? Yes, Abu. Christ is the Lord. Is God? Is the Word? It's not just the Word. It's the Word of God. It's our life. If you neglect the word of life, the word of God, you neglect Christ, you neglect your own life. You will see somebody who is sitting in the street, in the street, say, get out of there because a car is going to kill you. He said, no, why? Can't he see me, the one who is coming with the car? But you, can you see? You sit on, on the highway. Can you see anything? If you see, get away from the highway. Because if you save yourself, you save your own life. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. For to me, to live is Christ. And, and Apostle Paul said, I know who I believed in. And if you know whom you believe in, you can submit yourself to his will. You can let yourself be led by him. And your safety is certain and to die is gain. To come back to come back to examples of people who were prominent in the word of God, who went uh, astray it because they did not obey. What happened? Because, we, because before we come back to our topic, let's go back to Deuteronomy 42, verse 47. For Deuteronomy 42. 32 verse 47 for it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life and through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it Amen I'm not asking the question I know that people want to grow old. Many want to be 80, 90, 120. All of us, this is where we want to get. But it's the word of God in the first place that we need to respect. We need to obey to the word of God. Obeying to the word of God means to obey God. Love God is to keep his commandment and his commandments are not hard. They are not hard because he himself will put him out and has the capacity to obey him and he's going to do so. Let's continue. Verse 48, 49, 50 until 52. An example to stimulate us to keep the word of God, to love him and to be obedient. Let's continue. Verse 48. And the Lord speak unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up unto this, unto this mountain Abarim, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mount, whither thou goest up, 
and be gathered unto thy people as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Or and was gathered unto his people because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin because ye sanctified, ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Please be seated. You see what happened to Moses. Each one saw it. Moses, the one God was speaking to you from mouth to ear, this is what happened to him. The word of God is our life. May God bless us. Hallelujah. Let's read also. Luke. Luke Luke 24, verse 45. Luke 24, verse 45. Then, Open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Verse 46. And said unto them, Verse it is written, and verse it, 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 behoved, it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and ye are witnesses of these things and behold I sent the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. We say amen. All of us want to be endued with power from on high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's read Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Just one. Paul, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. When will that take place? You are the one who is reading. Read it back again. Blessed 
be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. When will this take place now? It's done already. It's in the past. Who agrees we are already blessed. And he who is blessed cannot be cursed. This is the way it is. When you are blessed, you may fall, but God will make you stand back again. We read here that we said the blessed may fall seven times, but God will make him stand seven, seven times. He has blessed us. And it's important. And Apostle Paul uh, introduces his commission is uh, an apostle not according to the will of a man but according to the will of God. He has already blessed us. We should keep this blessing. And you see oh, please go back to the beginning. Verse 2. Verse 2. I'm going to be quite brief but let's keep the most important part of it. Let's say thank you to God who made us get out of darkness to light. It's true. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The other day we reviewed Paul's life. We are not going to do so again. This morning we saw how he persecuted the church and we also saw how God granted his grace upon him. And so all his epistles start by grace. And the grace go along with the peace of God. You cannot say you have the grace of God and you don't have peace. If you have the grace of God, the peace of God will follow. Amen. Praise God. Blessed be God. Now, Verse 4. Amen. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Who is elect? We are elect, but when was that? Before the foundation of the world. It has nothing to do with today. It is something that was done already. And you will know it. Because the Spirit of God bears witness to your spirit, to your spirit, that, to your mind that you are a child of God, you should have this testimony. I'm not speaking because we should speak, but God speaks in your heart that you are a child of God. The, 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 the opposite may happen. We talk about children of God, and you are not concerned. You exclude yourself. I am not. The one doing it, you have your own witness, you have your own testimony, because before Enoch was taken, he received the testimony that he was pleasing God. You should also receive that testimony. You say, beloved brother, you can say, brother Isaac is good, but the testimony of God is greater than your testimony, and I want to receive from God. God should tell me, my son, I have chosen you before the foundation of the world. Those who are not elect, you will see they are going to do something very serious. Let's read Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, I think, 8. Revelation 13, verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. They worship the beast. Continue. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Can you hear me? Who hears me? It's not us. If your name was not written, you will worship him. But it's not in the 
book of life only, but in the book of life of the Lamb, our names were written before the creation of the world. May God assist us in understanding these things and uh, remain in this position because it's all about the position. It does not mean that you cannot fall sick, no. But your name is already written. It's already written. And this is where God has foreordained you to be. Why? Why? Because many say, but God, why is it? Why he foreordained that one and not me? God knows each one of us. He knows he said, before I am formed in the womb of my mother, you knew me. He knew you. He knew that you will choose, you will choose to follow him. So he will organize your pathway on this earth like the eagle egg we talked about the other day. It has to do with nature. The eagle net that was covered by a hen and the, uh, the, the, the small chick that get out, he never thought that it was uh, a small eagle. But you see, brother, don't think that Brother Isaac is telling you things. No, the Spirit of God should tell you that you are a son of God. Otherwise, you will remain with the chicks and cry like a chick. The eagle, the small eagle, was forced to eat the worms because he did not know his nature yet but one day his nature will be revealed unto him like the day of the Pentecost uh, there were more than 3,000 in Jerusalem but there were three, two groups some said uh, this morning that I've already drunk and uh, uh, acting like drunk people but they say oh what shall we do yes we have sinned but what shall we do and then uh, the answer was given to them repent all of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. The promise is unto you, unto your children, and unto all those who are far, whatever the number. And who are these? It's us. It's not everybody that accepts the grace of God. No. And this is why Apostle James said, practice the word of God. It means what should be accepted should be accepted. Practice the word of God and don't just listen to it for the sake of listening by uh, fooling yourself by fake reasoning. Say, brother, I can't feel it. But who told you you should feel it? You should believe what God did for you. We didn't say feel it. And you say, oh, brother, I feel like I lost my salvation. Who told you you lost your salvation? I made a dream. A dream is going to make you lose salvation. Can a dream cancel the sacrifice of God without telling me? Which dream, is, which dream can remove what God said, what God, what Jesus did? It does not exist. This does not exist. What the Lord did is already done. This chastisement which gave us peace fell upon him. And this peace should remain the peace of God. We cannot understand it. You cannot understand why people are happy, Christians are happy. You cannot happy. Why is it that those who are of nothing are around and are happy? Why? Because this peace he has, this peace cost the life of his Lord. The chastisement which gives us peace fell upon him. This chastisement gives us peace. So nothing should come and tarnish my peace. I may not find food two or three days. But this peace I have, nobody can remove it from me. Nobody can remove it from me. Who is going to dare doing so? Philippians chapter 4. Let's go rapidly. I want to wrap up early. Oh, the beloved that are troubled, come back to what the Lord, what God says, and accept what God said of you. You are blessed when you are already blessed. You cannot be cursed. Accept, accept. If your heart condemns you, who heard me? If your heart condemns you, what shall you do? You should repent. You should repent. Your heart is condemning you on uh, an item. 
your heart, your eyes are still on boys or girls, but cast yourself to the ground and say, Lord, I believe, but I do have an issue in me for such a long time. I have a problem uh, with women. And the Lord is going to tell you, that's not your position. Cry unto him and he's going to remove this evil spirit in you because it's an evil spirit. There are people who only commit adultery. But as long as the evil spirit is in you, you will continue. But you should get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Look at the great Peter, Apostle Peter. He's the one who uttered the words during Pentecost. But later on, he acted like an hypocrite in front of a child. Who was that? Paul. Paul. Uh, Paul reproached it to him. And we didn't say, uh, uh, Peter didn't say, you small Peter, you are the one who's reproaching something to me. But he said, no, everything worked together for the good of, of those who love God. A young boy re reproached me. And then he said, thank you. And hypocrisy spirit came in him and he was not alone. And he was not alone. Many started doing the same thing. And a young boy, full of the Holy Spirit, reproached to him. And he accepted it. He didn't say, the day of Pentecost, I'm the one who preached to you, the small children. No. It was good to him. We no more heard Paul, uh, Peter, no more heard Peter being an hypocrite. God knows the hearts. Hallelujah. And with him, Go a little bit up. Read out this passage. You will see how Paul behaved. Galatians 2, verse 11. Galatians 2, verse 11. But when Peter went, came to Antioch, was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. It does not give you the right to stand before all the elderly. How do you reproach all the elderly? You reproach them with uh, love, uh, like fathers. You don't act like uh, you don't act foolishly by saying, hey, you, old man, come here. No, 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 no. You do it politely. And you say, come and let's discover what the Bible says. And together, you're going to discover what the Bible says according to his behavior. You see a father who says he's a Christian. He says he's a Christian. And he's in the message. And he comes to your place with a woman who is not your, his wife. Don't accept him to sleep in your place with that woman. Uh, because it's my dad, if I say, but he's going to beguile your house. It's going to, I mean, it's going to uh, make your house filthy. And you say, uh, oh, dad, who is this auntie? You see, no. Uh, my, my son, a, a man cannot live uh, with uh, only one woman. This is my second yeah. wife. You say, ever since when? Outside. Get out and they will leave. Don't say, because it's my dad, I will speak to him. Let her uh, let, uh, sleep here. No, she, she should not sleep one minute in your house. It's a bad spirit. If Peter, if, Pete, if Paul reproached, Peter, you can you don't don't think it's a dad that you should not reproach anything, but with uh, meekness. Verse twelve. Uh, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, sharing them which were of the circumcision. And what did Paul say? If I still feared men, I wouldn't be servant of Christ. Why? So he came, he saw people, and he said, Oh, great Peter himself is eating with the um, circumcision, dissimulation. Brother, let's run away from this bad behavior. Our position should be known by all. What you are should be known. You should be a... a, a, a a letter which is read, people should know this is the way you walk. Don't let yourself 
slip away with people if I eat together with them this is what that would be but people reproached it to him uh, Paul reproached it to him if you need to be reproached we will reproach you should accept uh, God is teaching us instructing us for our own good it was for his good that he was reproached and Peter was happy and it was no more nobody, nobody reproached him anything it is Peter Peter was very happy because the young man reproached him, but he accepted. He didn't say, uh, Paul, the day of Pentecost, when I was speaking to the crowd, where were you? When the Lord gave me the keys, where were you? When he was asking, to, he was asking everybody, who do they say I am? I was the only one. Where were you? He put all this aside and he aligned to the word of God, which is the truth. Sanctify them by thy truth because thy word is the truth. He accepted to be rebuked because everybody should comply with the word. All of us, he accepted. And the Lord uh, really lifted him up. The Lord knows the ministry he gave to Paul, the ministry gave to Peter. Amen. Amen. Hello. So, let's, let's continue. Verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with the dissimulation. You see, how the church can be made filthy. How can the church can be spoiled. You may have a bad behavior and you go with others. If you are rebuked, you should accept. You should accept to be rebuked. Not for yourself alone, but for the others. Yes. For the others. Paul accepted. Even Barnabas. He looked here and there. He said, okay, these are the old. Okay, okay, let me continue with him. Let me die with him. And God went through the young men. Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not upright according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, he was not walking according to the truth of Paul? No. Paul has no truth. Paul has no truth at all. He cannot rebuke anybody according to his own truth, but according to the truth of the gospel. This is what resolves all the issues. I have no truth for myself. I have no truth for myself. The truth is Jesus Christ himself, and it is the gospel. They were not walking upright, but to see, you should have discernment. The Holy Ghost should come and say, the old man is doing badly. And this is his high time. We rebuked him. And this is what is done. But if, but they remained brothers forever. Let's continue. I said unto Peter before them, if thou being a Jew, livest uh, after the manners of Gentiles. It means if you are hypocrite. Continue. And not as to do as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? You cannot push people, draw people to do to follow you while you yourself are not good. Why do you compel Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Verse 16 knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. We say a great amen. Sisters, you are not answering. No, this is uh, too small. It's too sister-like amen. God bless you. You see, when we talk about work here, you should make the difference among two things. When we say it is not by the work of the law that man is justified is a reality. Law is everything that was prescribed unto Moses and the others. But there are works that 
have been prepared for us, according to Ephesians chapter 2 and other passages that we need to practice. The Christians should practice. Those who believe should learn how to apply good works. It's not the work of the Lord. This is not what saves them, but they are saved to practice this work. When we see you, you don't need to say, I'm Christian. When people see you acting, people, be, be, people wonder if you're a Christian. It's here, but the way he behaves looks like it's one of those we call Christian. In Antioch, in Antioch, did very right on the forehead Christian. Who called them Christian? It's the others that called them Christian. When they saw them, they saw they walk like Christ. There are Christians. You and I, when we, people see us working, already people should know that we are Christians. This has nothing to do with the work of the law. These are works that have been prepared by God that we may practice them and they do exist clearly and he himself makes us able to accomplish them. Hallelujah. So let's continue. We, we also, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. This is true. We will not tell anybody here. If you come, go around the temple, Ten times uh, uh, bare feet or on your knee, on your knees, or you suffer or whatever. You can stay here. You can fast uh, forty days, whatever days. If you did not accept Jesus Christ, you are losing your time. You are wasting your time, because redemption is eternal. This is what this is what Christ did for us, for you and me. Nobody else could do it. Nobody else. Nobody else. And he did it. Once for all, for you and for Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Let's take Revelation chapter 5. To come back a little bit on the subject. Of Revelation chapter 5. Isn't it? Brother Matthias. Where it is written. There wasn't anybody in heaven. Revelation chapter 5, you're going to see what he did for you and me. If you could do something, you wouldn't have come. So listen to me. Well, this is what he did for you and for me. If there was anything that we could do, the only thing that we can do, let me tell you, the only thing that we can do is to remain unbelievers. And when we die, we will somebody will remove our sins. <laughs> Who wants it? Oh, the Holy Father is going to come and say, my beloved. Oh. If you retain the peace, the, the sins of people, nobody will be saved. But this is not the way it is done. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. When you are alive, when you are still alive. It's not when you die. When you die, you are dead. When you, are, when you die, you are dead. Over. Once for all. Beloved, do you follow me? God is giving salvation free of charge today. Accept salvation. It's free of charge today. Free of charge. Once you die, I saw somewhere where all the dignitaries with the purple robes will come and they will say, forgive our brother. It's now that Christ himself prays for you. He prays today that your consciousness or your conscience may be pure, that you may accept the sacrifice. Today, he prays for us. From verse 2. Revelation 5, verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? Please stand. Who is worthy? The one who is worthy, he may stand. Avu, not you. 
You, you are working with me, so you can yeah, remain yeah, standing. Yeah, yeah. Who is worthy? The question was asked to all humanity. Let's continue. Verse 3. And no man in heaven. No man in heaven. No man in heaven. Continue. And no man in heaven nor in earth. Never under the earth. Nobody under the earth was able to open the book never to look there on. It's so strong. Look, even looking at the book is not permitted to everybody. You see today, there are some people who don't like the Bible. People who don't like the Bible. Yes, but don't like the Bible. When they see the Bible, they close it up and they put it aside. But God has granted his grace upon us. The Bible is our life. Because it contains the precious words of God that can prolong our lives. Because Christ is our life and die and to die is gain. It's a gain for those who made peace with the Lord. Those whose names have been written in the book of life of the Lamb before the foundation of the world. None of them will be beguiled. Matthew 24. 24. None of them. But the internal testimony should be true. Each one will feel that the Spirit of God bear witness to a spirit that is Son of God. What the others say is mean, meaningless. But God tells you by yourself that you are a Son of God. This is the most important thing in compliance with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you believe uh, according to the Holy Scripture. You believe according to the Holy Scripture. And this is the situation. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. We could even say, even neither be able to look thereon. They don't want to look at it. Today, people don't like the word of God. If you pray, they don't like it. I know a brother who accommodated somebody in his house. He accommodated somebody, somebody who is homeless. He was wondering, and he said, brother, can you come to my place? Come and live. And at, he said, can I come and live at your place? He said, no problem, come. The man is a servant of God. But every morning when he sings the praises of the Lord, the man says, I'm going to get out of here because you sing too much. I'm getting out of your house because you sing too much. If he was singing reggae music, he would have come and joined him in dancing. But he was singing the praises of the Lord and the praises of the Lord cannot please Satan when you sing. There are reg 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 regulatory, regulatory hours. Those who are in the administration, they can tell me around 10 p.m. there is no uh, noises that should be made. If people complain, if you have a meeting, a prayer meeting at 10 o'clock and people complain, it's a problem. But until 10 o'clock, the same manner they play, they dance, they make noise, you can pray at your home. You can correct it. The legal people tell me what is true because I got off, out of the atmosphere for a long time. But before 10, nobody can hinder you from singing or doing whatever. It's, it's not you have, at, 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 at 11 o'clock midnight if you make noise and people complain they will be right but before that until 9.30 p.m. if somebody complains it means that the devil has pushed him to come and oppress you but he will not he will be confused it will be confused because his complaint won't go anywhere because he was singing, he was singing reggae and he did not come to complain. There won't be any noises after 10 p.m. A Christian who does not pay his taxes, I don't know how you call him. There are some who make arrangements with the taxes. You don't make arrangements with the taxes. If you hear me, if you understand, you should pay 200000 uh, It's valid. Go and pay taxes to him 
who it belongs. It's written. Say, Prophet Isaac, you exaggerate. I don't exaggerate. This is the way it is. You should be without any blame. We read it a short while ago. You should not be found in uh, cheating. No. Let's go, brother. Verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Nobody, beloved, nobody. Verse 4. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Why did he cry? Why did John cry? Because we would be lost forever. Can you hear me a little bit? Sister, look here. If nobody was able to open the book, we would be lost forever. Nobody. Uh, the great angels were talking about they were in heaven, but none of them could open the book. Let's continue. Verse 5. And one of the elders saith saith unto me, Weep not. Hallelujah. Weep not. Weep not at all. Weep not. No small drop should fall out of your eyes because there is one. There is one. Hallelujah. Who knows the name of this one? He is wonderful. He is wonderful. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. Everybody worship. How do you sing it? How do you sing to him? Beloved, who is going to sing it? Come, brother Israel. If you don't want to sing it, everybody worship him because he's wonderful. If you don't worship him, uh, it's still, if you don't worship him, you reject what is wonderful. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. Everybody worship him. It is wonderful. It is almighty. is almighty. Everybody praise him. Everybody praise him. Jesus is wonderful. He's glorious. Everybody worship him. God love him. It's really wonderful. When we get here, we should be happy in his presence because here everything blossoms once more one again. What he did is so great. Let's continue. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Glory to God. And which book is this? It's the book of redemption. Would have been lost, but he opened it. Amen. Hallelujah. Read the verse which follows. And I, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four basin, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it has been slain. This is the lion of the tribe of Judah. A lamb. How is he? He is slain. But meek. A Christian should be meek. Why are you afraid? It's written that your meekness should be known by everybody. And what follows? The Lord is nigh. He is meek. He will not come and take people that are harsh. It is meek. May our meekness be known. I'm not going to say I'm 
make the salt does not say I'm salty. When you taste it, if it's not salt, you spit it. You think it's salt, you want to put it in your uh, in your in, in, in your sauce, but it's sand. You separate from it. So your meekness should be known by everybody, like the lamb is meek. Hallelujah. Let us stop here. A lamb has slain is the one who is going to come and open the book. Let's come back to Ephesians chapter 1. This is what he's done for you and for me. You couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. In, even in heaven, on earth, nobody could do it. Under the earth, nobody could do it. But he's done it. He's done it for us. From now on, we are freed. Freed. We went from death to life. From dark Yes, to light from yes. Satan to God. Now, if an evil spirit comes before you, and he comes uh, for his uh, small things, uh, you should crush him. Oh, don't be afraid. D don't be afraid. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm afraid of God, but I'm not afraid of any evil spirit. I am afraid of God, but I fear God, but I don't fear any evil spirit. Who is following me? Hello. So, my brother Kona, where are you? When we meet the devil, what are we going to do? Where is Kona? Taikoto Bayekusu. Who knows how to sing this song? Come and sing it, brother Fiko. Come. Let us not fear. Let us not be anxious because the devil is around. No, the devil can't do anything except if you give him teeth, he's going to kill you. Stop there and interpret it for us. We have forsaken the works of the past and we will not go back to them anymore. We have forsaken our bad works of the past and we will no more return to them anymore. Is it true or false? And God will make us able to maintain us in the new position. It means that everything which is opposite to his word is going to take it away from us. If we have this grace, if our names is, are written in the book of the Lamb, uh, book of life of the Lamb, uh, before the foundation of we will not be beguiled. I'm not the one who is saying it, Matthew 24, 24. Let's repeat this song. Let us stand. Those who can stand, please stand. It's going to be good for us. this part. If we find, if we meet, if we meet the devil, evil spirits on our way, we crush them. We tread upon them. There is no amen. You should say amen. Are you the one who is going to do it? He is the one who will make you able. It's written. It will make you able. It will make you able to do so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see this evil spirit which was in the car of Brother Brana and said, you worship somebody who said things. Never accept a bad fact that does not come from you. 
you are around and a fault comes up. Uh, is this right? Uh, we are losing our time. You say, you should say, Satan, get out. Don't waste. You are not wasting your time. One day you believe and you know who you believe in. Any opposite fault comes from the devil. You have nothing to do and you start saying, is it true? Jesus, you stop. You stop and order the devil to get out of your place. Don't be happy with it. It's like um, it's, it's, it's like when you are fishing, the bait is put uh, on the bait is put and then you are used as a bait. It doesn't come from you. It comes from the devil. He said the, uh, you are a Jews, a Jew and he packed his car and said Satan the miracles you make, are you the one who make them? The cancer I heal, are you the one who make them? You say, just get out of my car. Get out of my car. And Satan got out completely confused. You can do the same thing. Don't say because it's not a, a brother. Uh, you, you are a sister. These are the miracles that will follow those who believe. It's not only the brothers, but the sisters. Yeah, the sister, the brothers can preach the word, but if an evil spirit comes and is hindering you, you should uh, uh, just expel it because this fuck does not come from you. Remove it, and immediately this is how he saved Peter and is going to save you also. It's wonderful, our Lord, because he saves before he, uh, he, he, rebukes, he rebukes you. We uh, rebuke before, but uh, Jesus didn't want to reason Peter before, because if he did so, he would have died. He said, Lord, come to my rescue. Immediately, his long arm was extended to save Peter, and later on, he said, why did you doubt? He rebukes people after. Let's read to uh, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Please be seated. Where Satan will be crushed under our feet. Find this passage for me, please. Satan will be crushed soon under Romans 16 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look here. Let's go ahead. Romans 16, verse 20. The God of peace. The God of peace. Let's say amen. Let's say amen back again. We say great amen. Our God is the God of peace. He does not come to trouble people. He's the God of peace. When there is no peace in a household, it means God is not there. You start reasoning. You want to find a woman who is uh, without any issue, a, a man without sin, but you are going to wait too long because we are still in this body of shame, which is going to be changed soon, but not today. Today, you need to support. You need to submit to your husband. You should be able to see. Uh, has, uh, honey, this one, I don't like it, but because I love you and I did it, I accept it. And love covers a multitude of sins. You pray together. You don't close the door. Uh, it, yesterday, it came at 10. Today, is coming at 11. Tomorrow, you come later on. You, I will close the door. If it didn't come, you pray. You cry until it comes. The situation is complicated. You know what happened, and you complain. If I say he has died, what are you going to do? You have not seen him. The children are sleeping. You take your time to pray. Where is my husband? And the knock at the door. You fall in his arms. Oh, darling, you have come finally. This is what Christian life is all about. It's not a, a life of quarrels. A servant of God should not be quarreling. I'm not the one who said it. It's written. It's the God of peace that we worship. Soon he will crush Satan under our feet. When you crush him, he becomes mad under our feet. Under our feet. Look under your feet. Satan is lying there. 
Amen. He's not happy of me, but I'm not happy of him too. Don't wonder. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. I'm not happy of him because he troubles people. But he himself will be crushed very soon under our feet. And I love that. And uh, you will see the following verse. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Grace before, grace after. Before and after. When you read Paul's life pretty well, you see, it's all about the grace of God. But this grace teaches us to renounce sin. Grace has nothing to do with disgrace. It's not a new light. It does not authorize us to live in sin. On the opposite, it teaches us to renounce sin. Um, saying these things because there are groups of the message the other day we gathered and there were somewhere I saw a group uh, uh, next to the place called Le Palais they condemned everybody but they can take a thousand women and people clap for it one thousand women is good and people clap for it no it's not good it's not good at all at the beginning this was in the beginning this was not it uh, this was not a situation you need to return to the beginning and 1000 women no servant of god preached it. brother frank abraham never preached it. he gave a specific teaching and he himself when in heaven he saw his two wives around him he was uh, sad how can a person like this preach polygamy, you should say that you did not understand what he preached. Who agrees with him? He took his two women separately. The first died and took a second one, but he saw both of them and it was sad. And how can such a man be happy and say, take two, three, four women? Beloved, let us remain with our wives, so with our uh, spouses, the only one, not two, three, four. If you are converted a single woman will suffice you. I take it again. If you are converted, a single woman will suffice you. She will be sufficient to you. But if you are not converted, what, whatever we are saying, God made us let go from darkness to light. You are still in darkness. The Lord said that you are light, but if the light in you is darkness, how much this darkness could be uh, very great. Uh, you say you are light and we see you in uh, filthy things and you say this, and people will say, is this what your light is all about? Is this, is it this what you call light? Oh, what, how much great will be those darkness? But let us be children of light. Read out this passage. Matthew 6 verse 23. Matthew 6 verse 23. And when, but if then I be evil, why thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? We look here. We are in the message. The message is the light. At, at, at the evening time, the light appeared. Didn't it appear? We all know everything that. We all know that the Lord sent the prophet to teach us. But if you remain in darkness, it's all about you. What didn't he teach? What was supposed to be talked was talked. And this is why when people want to know what the seven founders of uh, uh, Revelation said, what you already know, you are not even practicing it. You are not living it. What is hidden is what you want to live. But the word of God said the hidden things belong to God. Who already heard it? The hidden things belong to God. And what is revealed is for us. They said, don't go after women. You go after women. You go after boys and uh, men. You uh, are a thief. Uh, you drink. Uh, and then when you are uh, sn snoring, you said, uh, what did the seven fathers said? Already leave what was told unto you. What you clearly know. Leave it. Leave it. 
the hidden things belong to the Lord, our God. And the revealed things uh, belong to us and to our children. Amen. Everything has, has been revealed to us forever that we may, so that we may practice all the words of this law. Glory to God. May God be blessed. Let's come back to Ephesians chapter 1 and then we'll jump the other. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He is the one who did this work, not you, not me. He chose us. Amen. Let's carry on. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Hallelujah. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Hallelujah. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Let's read this passage back again. It's so important. We have redemption through his blood. Brethren, look here. When we look at ourselves and we are weak, we are unable, what should we look at? By the way, what should we look at? Let's read this passage. What should we look at, by the way, this, the, to the blood. We should look at the blood. Who is following me? Don't look at what the devil tells you, but look at the blood. What did the blood of Jesus do for you? Let's continue. In in whom we have redemption for his blood, the forgiveness of his sin, according to the riches of his grace, always by his grace. The forgiveness of sins by his grace. I want to talk about forgiveness of sin. Something is important to me. Some people select sins. They say, oh, this sin is still haunting me, and I think God has not forsake, uh, forgiven it. But it's because you have not accepted the forgiveness. Otherwise, when the sin is confessed, it is immediately forgiven and even cast into the sea of forgetfulness. I'm not the one saying it. I have no interest in uh, deceiving you. No. Look at look look at you a little bit. I think it's Colossians that has to do with the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 2 from verse 13. For those who are adapting and the devil is making you adapt, this is all about you. They are all around and at a given moment they say, I feel that my sin is still present. You have nothing to feel. Just believe what God said. Colossians 2 verse 13. Colossians 2 verse 13. And you being dead in your sins, it means by your sins, we were all dead. We were all dead. We were dead. Let's continue. Being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. All, all trespasses. Adultery, theft, murder, Everything. I can't hear amen here. Don't go back with the sins that God has forgiven for how many years? Now, if you did not confess them, if your heart condemns you on one item, then God is condemning you. Come back to the sins and say, this is haunting me. It means that 
he has not taken it, he has not blotted it. He will blot it out so that you can be free because the gospel is the law of freedom, not the freedom of doing whatever you want, but the freedom of being obedient. So take back this Bible passage. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of flesh, your flesh, have you quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses? You see, in this passage, Paul involves or includes himself. Who wants a mattress? Who wants a mattress? Oh, the devil is going to give you a mattress and you're going to sleep very well in the corridor. And when you finish, you will say, Amen. And you grab your mattress and the sins and go back home. What we're talking about here is something key. Don't believe in what the devil says. Believe in what God says. Believe according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, all our trespasses have been forgiven. All of them are Otherwise, how come a robber, a robber, when you talk about robber, see the legal persons, go to see in the uh, vocabulary, a legal person's charges is high like this. But this robber's sins have been forgiven. Not only forgiven, but he ended into paradise. The same day, was happy to hear about that. And am I going to stay here crying? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. No, you should accept what, the, what God has done for you. Period. Let's continue. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. These uh, ordinances followed us when you are somewhere happy, hope it comes back. But he has blotted them out. Who blot them out? Is the one who opened the book and who broke the seals. Amen. It's done. He has blotted them out. The ordinances that was against us. And it, there have been cast into the sea, the sea of forgetfulness. Don't, it's something done. Don't feel that today you are well off and tomorrow if you have a headache, then your salvation is cancelled. No. Don't reason like this, but believe as say F the scriptures. He blotted out the handwriting writing of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. In in my book, in my Bible is written, it destroyed it, he annihilated it. It does not exist anymore. I can walk in all freedom and praise my God with faith. If we believe we are guilty, we cannot praise God. You praise a little bit and puff, here comes uh, the guilt and say, you did this and that, and you start saying, Lord, forgiveness, forgiveness. But here is over. Verse 14, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. All the devil, pow devilish powers. You know what? If my memory serves me right, there has, there has been darkness from 9 to 3 p.m. on the earth. Everything was dark uh, in, at noon. The evil spirits were around. They said, oh, we got him. But they didn't know it was a triumph. God is good. It was the triumph of the Lord. Uh, all of them were there. They said, wow, this man is a son of God. The uh, God. Maybe we should read it. It was in Luke. Luke chapter 23. You're going to see that all the evil spirits they saw darkness all around they, all of them they said oh we got his master but I didn't know but through this death he was going to be destroyed annihilated it was going to be made powerless and all those he maintained slaves were, are going to be delivered from now on each one will now look at the blood only amen let us read it 
Luke 23, verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And from what time? From 12 to 3 p.m. The, the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple resent in the middle. Hallelujah. Oh, great things happened for us. Let us be recipients of these things. Do you understand? People, parents should not be there and say, what did he do for you? I can't feel it. We did not ask you to feel anything. Just believe. Amen. Who has already boarded a bus? Who has already boarded a bus? I. Who knows how we manifest the bus? How people manifest the bus? What about the fan? Is it good to you? You don't know how they manufacture the fan. You just sit under it. Period. How is it you want to know what happened on the cross? Just believe. Amen. Accept. Period. Period. And you remain still. Every opposite word to this, you cast it aside. This is what Abraham did. Without taking into account his elderly age, he was giving glory unto God. He did not say, Lord, now I've been around for 25 years with this promise. It's no, he said, praise God. Next year, we're going to have our son. Sarah, Sarah, are you alright? She said, my Lord, I can't feel anything. He said, if you can't feel anything today, you will feel something tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let's keep on. Verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And what about you, my brother? Do you glorify God? Who glorifies God? The centurion was a sinner. But he saw the power of God. He saw that what happened is, you know, the centurion have been there over and over again. They are the ones who crucified, but he never saw such a thing happen. Never, ever. But you are not like the others, brethren. You are different. Give glory unto God. If a sinner has given glory to God, why is it you are standing there crying? This man, this, this is what, uh, uh, now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God. Let us glorify God for what happened to, for us. He said, certainly this was a righteous man. This is what he's done for you and me. Amen. So don't think anymore. Brethren, brother, you are saying this, but if you exclude yourself, it means something is condemning you. If something is condemning you, set order there. Repent. Who hears me? Repent. Confess. And allow God to have the possibility to purify you and to blot out this evil. Amen. Blessed be God. Let's go back to our test. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll read in verse 11. And we shall come back in First Peter to wrap up. Ephesians 1 verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inner retains. Oh, it's a wonder. We read it all. That's so that I'm not happy. We should read the scriptures. We have obtained an inner retains. We have become heirs, heirs of God and co heirs of Christ. Can, brethren, tell me, can you take any other person to be heir? No, you cannot be in the street and somebody will say, I like you, I like your face, and you become an heir. No, it's the children who become heirs. And it's only when the person who wrote the testament is when he's dead, then you become heir. We have become heirs. Not that we will become, but we have become heirs. Take Romans chapter 8, 
maybe let us read this one out until the end and then we'll come back to that. In whom also we have obtained and understand being predestinated. Being predestinated means before the world was made, God made us his heirs. You may say whatever you want of me, but when the testament is taken, read in it, I am a, 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 an heir. Beloved brothers and sisters, br beloved sisters, do you understand? Or you say it's too strong for us. Say, brother Isaac, we are lost, then we'll be happy. No, 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 I will never say that. I'm saying what the Bible says. I am an heir. Read Romans chapter 8. You see, these are things the Bible repeats over and over again, but we don't pay attention. Read Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, we start by verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. But still some want a small condemnation so that they may be proud that they have gone against this condemnation. I have overcome the condemnation. No. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. No single condemnation. Not even a verbal reproach. I accept it. Let's continue. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Let us now go in 8 verse 9. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. This is something which is crystal clear and God is the one who gives us the possibility not to live according to the flesh? We are not going to go in First John where it says that we don't sin anymore. But if somebody has sinned, we need an advocate. What else do you want? I write unto you that nobody sins. But if anyhow you have sinned, there is an advocate. You don't want all this. There is, uh, let's say, uh, 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 there is a hurdle which hinders you from doubting. I write unto you that you don't sin anymore. But if any sins anyhow, there's still an advocate. It's not an advocate for the whole world. It came to die for the whole world, but is an advocate for those who believe in him. But you see, I want to die. If you want to die, nobody can hinder you from dying. But there is an advocate. So it makes us able no more to to live no more according to the to, to the to the to the to the flesh but according to the spirit if you live in if the spirit of god dwells in you and those who believe they receive the capacity before the foundation of the world this is the way it is this is the way it is verse 9 Verse 10, and if, no, verse 9, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is not a Christian, but we, be, we think we belong to him. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Glory to God. Amen. Let's continue. And if the spirit of and if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a spirit that dwelleth in you. Death will only introduce us in glory. It's like the robber where broke his feet, but he did not feel anything. One day we're going to die if the Lord does not come now. But this death will be a slave. What a wonder. Let's continue. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are, we, are, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. We don't owe anything to the flesh. We are not forced to go and sin. 
we have the freedom to obey the word of God and to obey the word of God according to the scriptures. And God will make you able to do so. Let's continue. If you, if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Why, do you, why, why is it that God says he's the one who makes us able? If by the Spirit. It's not about muscles. I love women and I will decide today I will delete the name of all the women. I take my handbook and I delete everything and I tear it down. But if you delete it tomorrow, you're going to fill out uh, two handbooks. But if God performs this miracle in you, this miracle is a definite miracle. True. When I feel, when I when I feel, when I feel the drink, I can I know the smell of good wine one kilometer away. It's good. But from now on, when you feel, uh, when you smell. Uh, wine, you're going to vomit, cigarette, you're going to vomit, everything that was of interest in you in the past, you're no more going to love it because God acts in you. He's the one who acts in you, but you should obey. Don't act like the others who are saying, what can I do? How oh, is grace I'm looking for? Women, if God does not come to my rescue, I'm not... No, he should create in you obedience, and it's a reality. And you should be obedient should eat the best productions of the country. Continue. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God that are the sons of God, we should let ourselves be led by the Spirit of God. Let's keep up. Verse 15. And for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Let us be sincere. All those who are still fearing, stand and we shall pray for you. Who is still fearing, stand, is around, is afraid. What is going to happen tomorrow? God bless you, my brother. Tomorrow I'm going to fall. Is alone. You, sister, sitting, stand. God bless you. The others who are still fearing Satan, isn't he going to do this and that? Satan has no right over you. The Lord said in John chapter 14, I do believe, verse 13, we're going to read it out. We are expecting all those who fear. We don't believe in the salvation. Stand because you are an obstacle to our peace. Stand. We're going to pray for you. Some are around. When we close our eyes, they stand. If we see that, we're going to ask you to, 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 to sit up, to sit down, because you're not sincere. All those who are afraid that they're going to lose their salvation, you don't lose salvation. Redemption is eternal. If you are not saved, you are not saved. If you are saved, you are saved forever. These are the beloved. We'll pray for you in a short while. The others in the other rooms, you stand, we'll pray for you. God will remove the fear. Brother, give me back the passage of John. Romans chapter 8. That the brethren may see and no more be fearing anything. Read it, brother Avu. I'm taking your time, but it's good. Romans 8 verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear because at Calvary this spirit, this spirit has already been uh, crushed. Has been, and then uh, the, everything has been destroyed. God has triumphed over all those evil spirits that have no more power over us. Uh, if you still fear, it's the devil inspiring such a fear. We we'll pray for you. Remain standing. Continue, my brother. Continue the test. Verse 
8.15. No, 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 no. Romans, Romans 8, Romans 8, verse 15. Read it again. For ye have not received the spirit of bandage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Oh, you see, God has made us his children, and we can cry to God, Abba, Father. We can say, Daddy. When we see God, we call him our Daddy, even though God is God. It's our Dad. We say, Father, and he answers us. We are happy. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Let's look at John chapter 13. John John 14. John 14. John 14. 30. John 14, verse 30. You after, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this will cometh and have nothing in me. Did you hear me? The devil sh should no more have anything in us. We should surrender everything to him. Surrender everything the devil still owes, owns with you. Surrender everything. You should no more own anything with you. You should disconnect yourself. This is your language of today. No more connection with the devil. If you are connected, he's going to come and grab something. But no more connection with him. Amen. Read the follow-up. 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father and that the Father gave me, the, gave me commandment even as I do. Arise, let us go hence. Let us get out of the realm of the devil. Let us not remain in his presence. We're going to pray for the beloved that have stood. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. Let us pray for them. Hallelujah. There are some outside. Brother Matthias, come and pray for them. Our brother... Is what give uh, a song of deliverance. I'm set free. Glory to God. I'm set free by his word. In the past, I was bound by Satan, but I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. Before I was. I was bound by Satan. I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. I'm delivered by His word. I was bound by Satan, but I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. the past I was bound by Satan. I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. I'm delivered by his word. In the past I was bound by Satan. Now I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. In the past I was bound by Satan. Now I'm delivered. Glory to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we listened to the word of God. And in this word we heard that we did not receive a spirit of bondage to remain slaves of the principles of this world, of the principles of the flesh, bondage of the devil in sins in any manner we are totally oh God 
in a position in Jesus Christ whereby these things should no more have the room. But behold, brethren that have heard this word and will feel and see in the lives that are still in bondage in certain parts of their lives. This is the reason why we pray for them that they may fully accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That they may fully accept the work of redemption because Father, you sent your son that he may destroy the works of the devil. He appeared for that very reason. And if the son sets us free, we are really made free. Oh, please provide to this brethren the grace of faith to receive the total freedom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the bondage, may, may the, the bounds of bondage be removed this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, it's my faith that I should accept and receive and keep this good position. I pray thee, Father, that you reveal yourself to them and make them understand that, Lord, that the blood of the powerful Redeemer has been shed and that by the, your blood, being the Lamb of God, we have been made free. And the book of redemption is a testimony for us. Your blood speaks better than the blood of Abel today. These brothers and sisters, let them go home. Having believed in the sacrifice, having been freed by the work of redemption, you uh, triumphantly cry that all is accomplished. The veil was... Uh, uh, tore from top to bottom and Satan couldn't uh, hinder you from them. You rose the third day to justify our faith. Our Father, manifest thy grace in the life of your redeemed that have stood. And Lord, from now on, there may not be among those who are kept in bondage, but among those who are free and who serve in a thought of freedom the Son of God, the Lord of glory. And from now on, the lives may be shown to all as the life of the redeemed of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. It's not for those who are good that you have come. It's for those who yesterday were under bondage and free today. We believe in what you've done. Bless the brothers, bless the sisters, and the mother of Jesus Christ. And thank you for the freedom that we've got back again. Thank you, Lord, for the hand of bondage. Thank you for the jubilee, the which is sounding for them this morning by your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to interrupt. I'm going to stop here, and if need be, next time I'll come back. But keep the most important part. We went from darkness to light, and this is free of charge. If you reason, then you exclude yourself. We are no more slaves to fear the devil. When you take Hebrews chapter 2, you will see what God has done for us. All those who were kept slaves, uh, he has freed them. Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3, verse 14. Uh, therefore, because children participate into the blood, he, he was made in the likeness so that he can annihilate he that has the power of death. Uh, that means the devil. What, is, what else do you want, brother? Let's continue. 3.15. Hebrews 2. 2.15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Romans says the same thing. Let's continue the reading. For verily it took not on him the nature of angels, but it took on him the seed of Abraham and his house. Continue. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. Hallelujah. Look at it a little bit. You don't know maybe why I'm crying. Hallelujah. He was, he was a high priest, a merciful high priest. In James, in James 2, 
15, you will see what mercy does. Let's go fast. Check on the screen and read from the screen. James 2, 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. That's why it's important. But look at you and they say, you didn't do anything. You did not go with some arrangements. But God says that your bandage is over. Who cried? It's him. Your bandage is over. It's over. Why do you want to still remain a slave? When God has spoken, has spoken. So he has been made. Wherefore, in all things, it behoove him to be to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Uh, as where it's written that he was made like us, and but he never sinned. And this is why he can save us. He can save us from sin, because he has never sinned. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Give me the passage which says that he has never sinned. I jot it down somewhere. I'm going to wrap up, just uh, remain still. But when we get out of here, I, I jotted it down. I jotted it down somewhere. For 14, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. You cannot judge people while you are a sinner. You will see the difference. For we have not a, an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all things tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Oh, you guys are exhausted. Really. You, do you know anybody like this? He is the only one. God bless you, my daughter or my son. While the others are sleeping, you, you are still awakened. He was. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. It means that he can still have compassion over our sins. On, 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 on the contrary, he has been tempted like us, but he never committed any sins. That's what I wanted to say. We're going to read two passages to wrap up. I will uh, suspend it here. There is a transition which should announce its virtues. You cannot announce the virtues of anybody. If you yourself, you don't possess these virtues. I'm going to talk about it next time. But you should know what we are already. Let us know, like Paul, who knows whom he believed in. So the devil will no more come to tempt us, trouble us. While you are fasting and praying, you start the fast. And you say, you cannot succeed because you are worth nothing. You tell him, he came for those who are worth nothing. And he has already made me able. Isn't it? Let's take Hebrews. It's a conclusion that will come back next time. Hebrews chapter 9. In the first place, let's start by 2 Corinthians 2. We'll read it out until we wrap it up. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14 in the first place. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Listen, he didn't say, thanks be unto God because we can always triumph. No, which always causes us to triumph in Christ over all the devilish powers, always without any failures. If we count on him, we are overcomers. We are even conquerors, more than conquerors. Amen. If we believe, he said, Without me, you can't do anything. I will repeat it. Without me, you can't do anything. But did the Lord say, did the Lord say, 
you can't do anything. Why am I asking this question? There are brethren in this message who say, we can't do anything. He's done everything. If I'm a sinner, he knows. If I look for women, one day he will say, don't look for them anymore and it's going to stop. No. Who hears me? No, no, no. He gave you the power to become a child of God and his grace upon grace. John chapter 1 is a power that is as given to you. It starts by new birth. John chapter 3, if you are born again, it starts over there. And he himself, whatever he wants, he does it in you. Don't say you can't do anything. There is something you can do. When Apostle Paul says unto Timothy, do your do of every effort to be a, 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 somebody who is uh, tried before God. It means you can do, you want to do it. You can make efforts. You have a child, two years old, who comes to find you, who is sitting on the, uh, on the chair. The child is climbing and falling. You take him. There is a child also, one, uh, well, are two. One is hungry and he says, I can't do anything. Mom is far, is going to die of hunger. But if the other, you can crawl and come to mom. The mom will take him and give him food. That's what God wants us to do. Second Timothy. Second Timothy 2.15. We are obedient in the study to show that self approved unto God, a workman that needeth to, to be ashamed. Rightly dividing, dividing the word of you. You see, uh, some, somebody will come and say, it's, can I come to your place? Uh, say, yes, but he knows my place. I don't need to ask him a question. He, say, he knows my place. He said, brother, I can uh, carry you home. But I can even sleep in his car, but I should get into the car. I should make efforts to get into the car. In the verse that we're supposed to read next time, he has delivered us uh, from darkness to make us able to be air with the sense in the light and he has carried us in the kingdom of his son. He is the one who did everything, not you. Amen. Second Timothy 2.15 A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hebrews chapter 9, that you should bear to mind. Hebrews chapter 9. Oh no, we did not finish with Second Corinthians. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and make us, make us a manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Everywhere you go, there should, people should know that you are a Christian. Second Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 3, rather, verse 5. Second Corinthians 3, verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Who also have made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life chapter 4 verse 1 until verse 3 second corinthians 4 verse 1 therefore seeing you we have this ministry which ministry of the new covenant Let's continue. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. Let us be courageous. Let us be courageous. Let us not faint. 
verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We reject what does mean. It's part of the effort we make. Who agrees with that? It's an effort that we make. We reject when we see that this young girl is pregnant. The pregnant does not come from daylight is something secret. We, when we dig it, it's a brother. It's a, a shame you go and visit a sister. The parents know when you are in the message, they trust you. I so said, those people, they trust you. You can leave here. And then we learn that she is pregnant. I so said, your friend is pregnant. You start scratching your head. You are a false brother, a bad brother. You are a false brother, a fake, fake brother. You profess to know God, but you know him not. Apostle Paul says that with the sisters, we should have a pure conduct, a pure behavior. So we should reject this. These are efforts that God produces in us. But have renounced the hidden things of this honesty. Not working in craftiness. Craftiness is... Uh, something you do uh, in a dishonest manner to deceive the brothers. Now handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It's true. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Christ is the image of God. You know, we are made uh, with the image of Christ, it means that with the image of God. Cut yourself, you don't look like something important, but he wants to make you the image of God. Hebrews chapter 9. For today, we'll wrap up there. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, rather, from, from verse 18, which relates to me. I cannot let you go home without going and pray for me. Say amen. Who wants to pray for me? I will also pray for you. But if you don't love me, you cannot pray for me. You cannot love, you cannot pray for somebody you don't love. Let's continue. Hebrews 13, verse 18. Pray for us. We that are preaching the word of God, pray for us. Continue. For we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. Verse 19. Verse, verse 20, rather. Now the God of peace. Let us be attentive. We're going to say God acting. That brought again, again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. You see what the God of peace did? He brought again our Lord Jesus Christ to life. Let's continue. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Make you perfect. That is the that is the secret. You cannot assist anybody who has crossed his hands. He doesn't want to do anything. Look at me. Today in society, you see young people 
are making efforts. You want to go and work, you're going to have an interview. Interview, not good for me. Take me such as I am. No, you should go through an interview. Yes, this is it. You don't, you don't take people like this. Even the boss, but they don't take him just like that. He went through an interview, they trained him, things like that. But we are afraid. We fear. You need to be able. But it's going to make you able. This is important. We saw a short while ago that effort should be made and is the one who makes you able to make effort. It's the one who provides the efforts. Let's read it again. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, always by the blood, always by the blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, make you perfect. Make you perfect. It's satisfactory to me. Without him, you can't do anything. If he did not make you able, you can't do it. You may fast 40 days, 50 days. You won't do anything. Once you finish fasting, you start eating 1,000 times. But if he's made you able, your fasting will be meaningful. Continue reading. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Everything you're going to do that is good for, good for him is the one who's going to give you the capacity. Do you get it? Do you get me? Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. It's for his will. So we should accept. We should accept. We should be ready to accept the leadership or the direction of the Holy Ghost and do in you. Working in you. What does it mean? It means it should generate in you, produce in you. What else can we add? Jump here. Create in you. Create in you. Brethren, let us not be afraid to ask what we don't possess. He said, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and it shall be, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Don't be afraid. They say you are still sticking to lies, but lie is a evil spirit and who is the father of lies is the devil. He said, tell God I'm saved by a lie. Don't be afraid. Remove the lies and he's going to remove the lies. He's going to make you able to remove it, 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 it's going to make you able to say the truth even though people will cut your head. Let's continue. Let him do in you. God himself is going to do in us what he likes. But beforehand, he's going to remove what he does not like. Do you see? Because the Lord saved he has come to remove everything the devil has grown in us. He has come to annihilate the works of the devil. Everything that is bad in your life is going to remove them in the first place and do in you what is well-pleasing to him. If you are a woman who is not obedient, he's going to produce the submission. If you are a man who does not love his wife, he's going to generate love. If you are always outside, he's going to bring you back home. That's a few examples I wanted to say. May God bless you. Let's continue. Working in you that which is well pleasing in the sight for Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you. We're going to see now that He has made us able. I'm repeating it for the second time. He has a goal that we announce His virtues, but He should pour in us those virtues, and then we can be able to announce them. May the Lord bless each one of us. Beloved, who are listening to me live, know that the Lord on Calvary has done everything for you for us also. But, but, everything it requires in terms of effort is the one who produces this effort. It makes us able, we should accept the leadership of the Holy Ghost. We should stick to his word. We should be obedient. It is written, if you are obedient, you shall eat the best production of the country. If you want to accept, it's going to purify you, cleanse you, and make you able to 
generate and produce the efforts he wants you to produce. He wants to create a new, establishing you what is well pleasing to him. And when he looks at you, he says, This person is well pleasing to me. It's, it's not you doing it, but you wanted to be well pleasing to God and he's going to produce it. May God bless, bless you. Let us stand and sing a song, and Brother Matthias will come and take over. I greet the beloved that listen to us. Know that if you are still not pleasing God, it can make you be well pleasing to Him. If you are weak, it can make you be able. If you want to obey Him, it's going to make you obedient because He has foreordained you to be without blame before Him before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. But don't be part of those who believe they can live in sin because God said that you can't do anything. No. He said that you, that you can't do anything without me. But with him, we perform great actions. With God, we perform great actions. And may God, uh, we should do great things. Chanterai 